Welcome back to Sikkim 365 Radio. Are you a Sikkim 365 super fan? Then try out our premium subscriptions at Sikkim365.com. Welcome back in to Sikkim 365 Radio. Paul Kenley and Craig Smoke. Smokey's off today. It's Academic All-Stars Day, so he is preparing for that. Or taking a nap. Sometimes I wonder if he doesn't take a nap on a- Academic All-Stars Day, Craig. Uh, very well could be. We'll I mean, be he's, surprised by that. He's got a lot of work to do tonight, but a guy who's done a lot of work this season's got some work ahead of him. Mitch Thompson, MCC Baseball, joins us now uh, as they're on to the Supers. Uh, and Mitch, this is a team, this has been a, a weird last few years for for you guys. I mean, last year was weird for everybody. I mean, the the last time you were in the postseason, it ended in the most bizarre fashion it could. Uh, how much for this team and some of the guys who've been around was a post a deep postseason run just a singular focus for a long time? Hey, it's it, it, it's our focus. Uh, you know, from the first day of, that we get here every year. I mean, we're talking about going to Grand Junction and playing for a national championship, and that that's the goal. And and you know, so we've been striving for that. Uh, you know, uh, for for since August here this year. And, some of these kids have been doing it for, you know, a year or two years since then uh, that have been here. So, uh, you know, every year we start off, that, that's kind of the focus and the goal. And to be in this position right now, you know, two wins away from, from going to Grand Junction is, uh, is fun. There's only two teams left in our region, and we're one of them, and we get, to, we get to play the game. So hopefully we can go out and play well and come out on top. And, Coach, you're in this position because not only what you did during the regular season, but uh, then, obviously, the uh, the regional tournament. Uh, you beat Clarendon 10-2. to You beat Temple College 8-7. to And then uh, beat Temple again 10-4. Uh, to uh, Just how would you feel about the team? Obviously, getting three wins is a big deal. You're still playing. But uh, what would you think of your performance in the Region 5 tournament? Yeah, I thought we played well. I think we continue to play well. You know, I mean, the, the last month or so of the season, things have have really gone well for us. We've continued to get better. And, um, you know, I loved our focus in the region tournament. I thought we were very businesslike and, uh, you know, tra- taking care of each team that we played and playing as hard as we can. And, you know, Temple challenged us a little bit, but it was nice to come out on top. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just like, I like the mindset of these kids. They, they're, they're fun to be around. They, they've got goals. They have, they have dreams. They have aspirations. And so, you know, here we are. You know, a week or so after school's already out, and uh, you know most kids have started summertime, but these guys are focused on trying to go to Colorado, and I'm I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. Mitch, you guys are on one heck of a tear that started uh, about a month ago, winning streak wise, uh, but and you haven't seen Cisco in 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 almost two months. How how have things changed for both of you since then? Oh, I think that they've changed, you know, dramatically for both teams. I'm sure. Uh, you know, we played Cisco in the very first uh, conference series. Uh, you know, of, of our eight weeks of playing conference, so we, you know, we haven't played we haven't played them for two and a half months. And uh, you know, they're a different team. They're, they've they've changed some things. We've changed some things. Some some guys have emerged, and some roles have changed. And uh, but they're a talented team, no no doubt. And uh, they have they have big, strong, physical guys to play them playing out on the field position they got guys who can hit the ball out of the ballpark and um, you know they're a talented team so they'll, they'll provide us with a real challenge and you know uh, you know you know they finished fourth in our league but they were fighting for postseason for the last two weeks before that so they've kind of been playing postseason ball you know with their mentality uh, for the last three weeks and so um, they're, they're a dangerous club no no question Coach, just what's the, the overall year been like? I mean, has it been satisfying? Has it been fun? Has it has it been all those things, or has it leaned more towards the stressful side? No, there's no question. I think like if, if nothing else, last year taught us to really respect just the opportunity to go play. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, last year we were off to a great start, nationally ranked, probably top three, four, five in the country, and nineteen and five, and rocking and rolling. We loved our team and felt like we had a, a you know a team that could go win it all last year and then have it taken away from you I think that you know I think COVID's taught all of us don't don't take the little things for granted don't take the opportunity to go out and practice and get better and don't take the opportunity to be around your teammates for granted and um so no this has been an extremely uh gratifying season and and 
and for for me as a coach, it's been gratifying to see our team continue to improve and continue to grow, and and now to be in this position right now is yeah, it's it's, it's gratifying for sure. And so we're thankful and thankful for the good Lord up up above giving us these opportunities. Now we just need him to make sure and shut off the rain so we can get this. <laughs> weekend uh mitch you your team's hitting 308 uh this year and, and they're on base a lot uh got a lot of pot have you had a team since the last time you're in grand junction that that hits like this yeah no i mean i i think uh when i think back of our clubs you know our 15 team was a team that uh we finished fourth in our conference and second in the country that's mm-hmm. that's that's what this league is kind of about mm-hmm. you know uh and that team, that team could swing the bat, but the 2017 team was really explosive offensively. Uh, hit, a, hit probably on close to 100 home. I think we're 98 home runs, full over 100 bases. Uh, so you know, to be a to be a team that could hit 100 and steal 100 is, is pretty unique. And uh, but every year we 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 seem to have you know a pretty good group of offensive players. Last year our, our offensive team was really good, and and this year's team is a step forward and competed as well. Uh, this year's team's a little different. We we seem to have a little, little more uh, depth at times where we can play a few different guys in different situations. We've we've come through and fought through some injuries and and uh, and even been able to play you know small ball at times uh, when we needed to to be able to bunt runners up or, or take a drag bunt or a push bunt for a hit and uh, move guys up instead of just you know playing uh, the old old gorilla baseball. Let's get up and try and hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, this year's team's been fun that way too, as we can we can run a little bit. So I, li- I like the club offensively, and uh, and it, you know we've been producing up and down the lineup, so it's been fun to get see our eight nine hole guys contributing and and getting big hits and doing those things as well. So do you basically have your phone on the weather app at all times right now to just monitor what's going on with all this? Like you said, it's been like a shower off and on the last few days. So you just is that just like constant? Uh, reminders of what the rain percentage is and all that. How do you kind of navigate? Yeah, I'm eating tums like like they're candy. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's giving me a dead gum ulcer. There's no question. I mean, you know, we fought hard to win the conference to host a regional. We fought hard to win it and now get a chance to host this super regional. I really want our our local hometown fans. I want Waco to show up and to see these kids and and to see, you know, what McLennan baseball is all about, because if they come out here, they're going to go, wow, look at the talent on both these teams. And, and they're going to be very excited uh, about the level of play, I think. And, uh, but yeah, my phone has definitely been worn out on the weather app. And, you know, I, I mean, I've created charts and everything, dude, so I can follow the weather, <laughs> follow the weather in Abilene and Tyler and Austin and Dallas. And I mean, I, I know, the problem is it keeps changing every hour on the hour all the way across the state. I don't know if anybody knows what's going to happen because we were supposed to be getting flooded here today and haven't had a drop. So um, we're going to play at 12 o'clock noon on Friday with the understanding that if we need to back it up a little bit to, to get it in the start, we'll, we'll back it up. But if we can play at 12 o'clock, uh, we're going to play at 12. And, um, uh, you know, I, I didn't want to set the game time for two or three o'clock in the afternoon, and then uh, a rain shower come in at four o'clock and screw us up when we could have played at twelve. So that's why we set the game times when we did. You know, Mitch, it's funny uh, you're mentioning the the weather app. You know, your your old friend Hoot Jonigan and I during a, a Baylor game one time in a rain delay, uh, I was sitting in the booth talking to him, and I had no idea how much you guys could walk onto the the new set tomorrow and say all right here's what's going to happen because how much baseball coaches have to watch the weather well we do and you know i mean that was the thing that that this week was really uh interesting too you know we we end up having to cancel that sunday here and uh you know we we we, we banged it early sunday morning and we're going to go to we're going to go to abilene to finish it up and play on their artificial turf and and so we 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 spend the night and and Sunday or Monday morning before we play Temple in the championship game. I mean, it comes an absolute flood, big time storm comes through Abilene, and it is just it's raining cats and dogs. And I'm going, oh my gosh! And then all of a sudden it's it's gone, and with the with the wonder of artificial turf. You're on the field 30 minutes later, and, and here we go. Ding, ding, we can play, you know. And so that was fantastic. Uh, you know, 
our poor kids this week, we've been pulling that tarp on and off the field. And I told them the other day, I said, hey, guys, if the worst thing we have to do is pull this tarp on and off the field uh, once, twice a day to let it breathe when we can and to dump the water when we can so that we can play here, we're going to do it. And they're all in on it. But you're, you're right. We, we do become weathermen. Uh, and, uh, and and I'm I, I'm really looking for the guy, the – you know the guy that's out there doing the rain dance because I want him to stop. We need we, <laughs> we need to tie that guy up and put him away for a while. <laughs> let, let him let him chill yeah. out a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> save it, save it for midsummer when we're all dying of heat. Exactly. Uh, we don't we don't need it for right now. Exactly. Well, hey, coach, uh, big game. So for those out there that are interested in maybe coming and checking it out, uh, all the details and information on on this Friday. Yeah, we're, we're going to go Friday at 12 o'clock noon out here at Bosque River Ballpark. Tickets will be available at the gate. Um, and, you know, I just I, I really, really ask, you, you know, Waco to come out and support us the best they can. We, we really want to have a great atmosphere for this. It's something we've been fighting for and working for to bring these events to our campus as opposed to going, you know, to a, to a neutral site where, you know, the only people in the stands are parents. And so mm-hmm. – um, we'd love to have Waco out here and, uh, and, and we'll look forward to having your support this week. We're, we're going to try and win this thing, go to Grand Junction, see if we can win a, a national championship. Mitch, thanks so much for joining us. Always great to talk to you. Really appreciate you guys having me on. Tell David, I appreciate it. You guys take care. We'll lo- love what y'all are doing. Okay. Right. Thanks, thanks coach. Right. Appreciate you. Yeah. Mitch Thompson, one of the great guys was at Baylor forever. Uh, and really, I mean, you know, when, when that happened and he got hired at MCC, I, I thought like my first thought was they're they're just going to win nonstop, and that's pretty much what they've done now. Pretty much, you know, you get down to the you know getting to Grand Junction is a tough thing to do, and of course, a couple years ago, Craig, they had the weirdest ending to the season ever, is they had a little bit of a a beanball war yeah. in a game, and then the benches didn't so much empty as like everybody like stood up. Yeah, and, it was like, a weird came, situation, and then it like was... all of a sudden they're like, okay, everybody's ejected. Yeah. I'm like, well, what that means? The uh, game's over, series over. Both teams lose. Bye. Yeah, no, that was that was all very weird. Um, yeah. And I remember talking to him shortly after that. I think you guys probably did too. It was it's all bizarre, and it was very unfortunate the way that that season like just came to a sudden halt. But uh, you know, they they bounced back from that. Uh, he's done nothing but put guys in, you know. Um, the pros in the minor leagues, in the the higher college ranks, you know, you look at the, the MCC roster, you look at some of the, you know, the baseball recruiting websites are a bit more technical than a lot mm-hmm. of the football ones and stuff because they have to be so much deeper and there's so many more prospects and different levels and all that jazz. But, um, you know, every year you look up and down that roster and they're, you're going to have, you know, double-digit guys that are signing Division One, you know, scholarships to, to move on and, uh, you know, Josh Bro just drafted by the Yankees a couple of years ago. Uh, I mean, they've had all types of success. If you're a baseball fan living in Central Texas or living in Waco and you haven't gone to check out MCC, that you're, you're really doing yourself a disservice. I mean, you want like a cool, like just Saturday afternoon watching some pretty good high-level baseball and some guys who in uh, in some cases will go and, and play for the Arkansas, the Baylors, the UTs, or the, the Yankees or the Rangers – Go on, check out the, the talent on Saturday at uh, at the ballpark, and, and it's a beautiful place too. And they they do a good job there. So really cool event. And this was supposed to be in Abilene originally, and then they moved it. So Waco, you know, we want cool events, we want fun stuff to do on the weekends, and fun stuff coming to town. Well, uh, here's a fun event right here coming up on Saturday afternoon. You still have the whole night ahead of you. Yeah. Uh, so really cool activity. Go out to go out to the ballpark, uh, yeah. Brazos Ballpark uh, this Saturday. Yeah, Friday. Or Friday, Friday. excuse yeah, Friday. me, Friday. Yeah, but uh, always great to to hear from Mitch and uh, you know the, the Garrett Martin. Uh, look, if you're a if you're a Rangers, if an old Rangers '90s Rangers fan, Mason Greer, yeah, Rusty Greer's son. Yeah, he's on the team. Yeah. He's on the team. Uh, you know, having a great year. Fantastic. He's a freshman, so. I uh, got uh, a little more time uh, with him at MCC, but but Mitch has done a fantastic job, and yeah, I, I, Craig, I had no idea. I had, you know, and I, it made sense when I, I I sat and talked to him, but you know, it was back when I was doing PA for Baylor baseball. We had one of those days where it's just rain, rain. You know, try to get it in. You know, they played an inning and a half, and it rains. It stops. You know, they get everybody out there. It rains again. They're trying to get the last game of a series in. So I 
went down. I had nothing to do for, you know, at least two hours. So I went down and sat in the radio booth with, uh, with Derek and Hoot and, and Hoot was like sitting there on the radar telling me stuff. And I was like, how the hell do you know this? Like, he was like, look, man, I'm a baseball coach. Goes, All of us. He goes, there's, there's not a baseball coach around that doesn't know how to monitor the weather and like goes deep into it. Oh, you know, yeah. they're yeah. not just go, they're not just looking at my iPhone going, uh, oh, 60% chance. They're going, well, 60% chance when, at what minutes of the day will it be a 60% chance? They go that deep into it. All right. When we come back, phone lines open 254-339-1122, call us or text us. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk, but uh, I want to get more into the offensive line uh, talk. And uh, at the top of the four o'clock hour, uh, Craig, the uh, Hartford president. Uh, and I wasn't, uh, it was a little bit, but uh, he is, he's not popular right now for his treatment of athletics. And of course, we've, we followed that closely because of our good friend, John Gallagher. But uh, we've got some video from the commencement that I don't think you'll see very often at very many places uh, of Hartford coming up at 4 o'clock. This 